Okay, so we left off in Flash and we'd created our main microsite FLA and then four bits of content that were hopefully going to be loaded into the UI loader. If we preview where we left off, we'd managed to get the UI loader in microsite to load the home page by default when we arrived at the site. So, where from now, basically? Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we need some background, I guess, on this, a bit of visual stuff. So if we look at the timeline view, at the moment the loaded content is in a layer on its own, so let's lock that layer. Let's create a new layer and bring that down to below everything. And I'm going to call this one gradient background. We're going to put a nice simple gradient background wash down the page. Now, in order to do this, we need to create a symbol that we can use. So let's create ourselves a symbol here, new symbol. We'll call it background. And then, actually, should we call it gradient background so we can distinguish between this and some other backgrounds we're going to create later? And we'll create it as a movie clip. And click on OK. Now the great thing about gradient backgrounds is that because we're working in vectors they can just scale up and down no matter what. So what we're going to do is rather than drawing a massive background I'm going to draw a rectangle, get rid of its border, select it and then in the properties I'm going to change the X and Y to 0 and 0 and the width and height I'm just going to make 50 by 50 enough for me to see it but there's no reason for it to be you know, a thousand pixels wide and 500 pixels tall at all. So there we go, there's our little gradient wash. But of course, at the moment we haven't got a gradient applied, so window and color. We're going to go for a, what we're going to do is actually go for a radial gradient. And we'll choose some colors for that. Very simple idea. I'm then going to zoom in on it because I want to almost pretend I'm working with a massive image. Okay, if I click away from that, see there's my gradient, very, very subtle. I'm going to take the gradient transform tool. I'm going to select the gradient. I'm going to move the center point so that it's near the bottom. Then I'm going to make it bigger so that it stretches from the bottom to the top. And you'll see that what you get almost looks linear and we can make it look much more linear by stretching this out and so we've got what looks like a linear gradient but it's actually radial it makes it a lot more interesting when you look at it perhaps if you wanted it to be even more so you can zoom back out again and of course stretch this even more like so. then we'll just come back to our gradient background there's our gradient background and our object Come back to scene one and now we need to use it so we take our gradient background item drag and drop it in go straight into properties and just do it this way zero zero nine nine five five four fifty so you can see that's the same size as the stage in that view very very quick and easy but the key thing is prepare your symbols first and then it's going to be a lot easier to implement them in the view. Let's just do a quick show all that. So there we go, that's our first part done. We've got our UI loader and then we've got our background in. Let's have a quick look at what that looks like now. So save and test. Ah, not bad. But it would be quite nice if the home element actually had some content behind it in this view. Perhaps just to sort of designate where the page is and maybe the same thing over here in the sort of news panel or links panel we're going to go for at the side. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need another library item. So let's create another library item, which we're going to call sort of panel background. Now, the clever thing about panel background is I want to use it in different places at different sizes. From what we saw with the gra gradient background, that should be pretty easy. But what we're going to do as well is we're going to enable this nine slice scaling idea. And that allows us to actually mark out the corners so the corners won't resize as we scale this content. So we'll be able to design a panel that always looks the same, but can be implemented at different sizes and maintains the roundness on the corners, the thickness of the strokes and so on. So click on OK. Now the nine slice scaling guides, we won't worry about them as yet. We'll move them in a minute. And we're just simply going to take our rectangle primitive tool here at the side, go into properties. I want to give that a white background and a dark border. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle 
and then change its values to zero and zero and we'll make it so that we can see it. So 100, actually maybe even 200, 200 by 200, just so that we can see where it is. I'm then going to take my black mouse pointer and round the corners. Like that. Very, very simple process. Let's zoom in then, and we can start to think about where these nine slice scales go. Okay, the idea is that this central region inside the sort of grid will scale, but anything that's in the corners won't scale at all, and the stuff at the sides and the top will only scale in one direction. So we need to move some stuff around. One. Effectively, the idea here is to chop off the corners so that they don't need to scale. Now you don't have to be exact with this as long as it's enough, but you can, because if we zoom in a little bit, You'll notice that your shape gives you some hints on this one. See the little purple dots? That's the beginning of the corner. So if we come to just up to next to those, come down to the bottom, and this one needs to come up a little bit to there, and come across this side to check the left, right. This one could be coming over a little bit like that. Back up to the top. Yep, that looks okay. What we've now marked out is to say that corners won't change their scale. These ones will only scale horizontally, and these ones will only scale vertically. The content in the middle will grow. The other thing that I want to do before leaving this is to apply a little bit of alpha to our white infill. So we'll bring that down to about 87, just to reveal a little bit of the background through. And we'll then come back to scene one. Okay, so here's our live item panel background. We're going to add that layer in, and we're going to call it, um, well, what should we call it, loader background. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to drop it in and I need to position it. So I'm going to position it so that it falls actually just outside of that region. I'm going to take my scale tool, retransform tool, and I'm going to pull that corner holding the alt key as I do so. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than this area. Just like that. So, nice simple idea, we just put the panel background in and we made it slightly bigger than the UI loader. You notice that the corners still have the same roundness as when we drew them originally. Let's save that and give that a preview. And you can see you get your nice rounded corners on your shape, with then the home content almost looking as if it's loading within that section, but simply it's loading on top of that content. Very, very simple idea. Okay, and let's close that view. And that brings us back to our designer. So while we're thinking about this panel background, let's put this panel over on the side then. So I'm going to add another layer in, and we'll call this one side panel background. Hopefully later on add some side panel content in. I'll actually add that layer in now before we forget. Side panel content. One thing I find really useful in flash design is to lock all the layers apart from the one I'm working in. And then I know I can definitely only add content into that one. I'm going to add some, well, in fact, actually, probably just do this by eye, really. So I'm going to drag and drop it in, position it about where I think it needs to be, pull out the edge with the Alt key, to about there somewhere, and pull out this edge with the Alt key. In fact, actually, let's undo that process. Let's make sure we pull this edge down with the Alt key. Down to there somewhere. That's probably not going to exactly line up. But we'll have a look at it and we'll make sure it does in a second by simply zooming in and we'll bring a guideline in from the top onto that top edge there oh, zoom out a touch from there a little bit too much in black mouse pointer click on our shape and move it down like that down one more there we go and then we'll come down to the bottom and we'll do the same thing down the bottom drag in the guideline position it there Free transform tool, hold down the Alt key, drag it up, and it needs to be one pixel shorter than that. So, gently do it. Gently does it. If it won't go exactly, very simple approach, just drop it in there, into properties, and then just bring the height up very gently. Like that. So it lines up nice and neatly. Back to there. Scroll across to the side, check the left hand and right hand edges look okay. Yep, yeah, looks good. Notice the corners still maintain that nice roundness because of the nine slice scaling. 
that we applied. Come back to 100%, move it around so it's in the window. And then we can simply lock that layer, save our content and do a quick test. And you can see you get this nice sort of side panel structure, but it's always got this same feel to the content that you added to home. So very, very useful little feature. Okay, with that, we'll make sure the file's saved and we'll stop that section.